London Brands. Hey, what's up, everyone? This week, we're talking about Brand You, building your platform to spread your message. Check it out. In a world where advertising is ignored, business is exposed, and the only constant is change. How do you build a brand that matters? Welcome to Brands on Brands on Brands, a home for those who think different and push their boundaries. This is where branding that matters lives. Now, here's your host, Brandon Berkmeyer. Hey, 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 what's up, everyone? Welcome to Brands on Brands on Brands. I'm Brandon Berkmeyer, your personal marketing coach, and I believe that building a brand that matters is the only way for a business to thrive tomorrow. Thank you for tuning in each week as we talk to you about marketing and branding and bring to you the thought leaders that are really changing the game in marketing. Today's episode is a deep dive episode, specifically talking about brand platforms, how you, as someone who wants to have a story, a message, Say you're a coach, you're a consultant, you're an expert in your field or an entrepreneur with a message, how to build your platform to share that message. Everyone needs a place to tell their story and it's not what you think. It's not social media. You do have to find a place that you can scale your message and become a one-man media company or one-woman media company in that sense. That's what we're talking about today. But for my first-time listeners out there, I hope I have a few of you tuning in today. Make sure to go to brandonbrands.com and check out my content and subscribe to the newsletter, to the team, to see if you want to get content each week and let know what's going on with our business. That's the way to do it. Go to brandonbrands.com forward slash B team, and you'll find that way to sign up. And for those of you out there that have been listening, you've been considering building your brand platform, starting your personal brand business. I'd love to jump on the phone with you and seeing how we can help each other. I do teach people how to launch podcasts. If that's of interest, that is one of the platforms that we're talking about today. And I work with people to do that, a select group of people, which might be you. If you've been even thinking about it a little bit, I'd love to at least give you 15 minutes of free advice to get you moving to start your podcast. Go to brandonbrands.com forward slash apply to do that. And with no further ado, let's jump into today's topic building a brand platform, the brand of you. So first thing I want to say is this is a part of my bigger kind of series that this whole season is going to be around, which is the idea of personal branding, which I kicked off and I explained it to you guys. If you haven't listened to it, episode 94 kicked off the season. And I explained that there are three pieces to a personal brand. It's your message, your community, and the impact you have. I'm diving deep into that first piece, which is your message. Your message, I've explained, is comprised of three things, positioning, platform, and social proof. And you can go to episode 95 to check that out. But today is the platform part of that conversation. So all this is related to your message, how to make your message more findable and have more impact. So your message should be delivered on a platform. Now, the platform of your personal brand is important for many reasons, but the main reason is it's important is that it is the catalog of you, the catalog of your information that explains to people that you want to be known for this thing. It is the library of your information. And there's a lot of places that you can create this library. And that's what we're talking about. So the first step in this platform part of building your personal brand is picking a format. What does that mean? That means figuring out, putting a stake in the ground on where you want to live? Where do you want to catalog this information? It doesn't just have to be one place, but it has to be at least one place. And the typical places you can choose are related to the kind of content you create. So either you're going to create something that is a image, a video, or written content or audio content, right? And if you are building these kinds of things, that usually means that the top places that people are looking for that kind of content are if you're a video, they're looking for you on YouTube. If you are audio, they're looking for you on a podcast. And if you are a blog, they're finding you via Google search on the web. And images is a whole other thing, but typically that is living on Instagram. And I'm not covering Instagram as a platform because it's very niche. It's the kind of thing that really 
makes sense as a platform for someone who's leading with images as their brand, as you know, a photographer would do, or someone who's in travel or something like that. It is a whole other nuanced piece of this that I don't want to get into, but I would say that even that is complemented with a blog where you can further explain in depth what the pictures are and index them and say, hey, this is where you know this story lives or this thing. So let's take that off the list right now and say the platforms we're talking about today are YouTube, podcasts, or blog. And the reason these three are so important is these are the places where most of this content lives. And when someone's going to search for a blog, they're going to go to Google, they're going to type in a topic, and then they might find your blog. If they want to watch a video on something, they're going to go to YouTube. They're going to type into YouTube, which is also a search engine owned by Google, you know, how to do this or whatever that thing is. And that's where you're going to be found. Or if they are listening to a podcast, they're going to go to their preferred podcast vendor, which right now the biggest one is Apple. And I know Spotify is out there too on Google. But Apple Podcast is typically where that lives, and they're going to search for that topic that they want to listen to content on. And for you, your job first is to fit, say, where can I create? What A, makes sense for my business, and B, do I think I can deliver consistently and is comfortable for me? Now, I get it. Like We all might have things that seem like they would be the best in terms of performance, but you really do have to think internally about what for you can you create that makes sense? If you have been creating video and you already know how to use cameras and have great setting and lighting and you travel a lot, video might be great for you. It's certainly one of the more effective ways to connect and build engagement with an audience. So I love video. It's just a lot of work to create, but if you have that kind of skill and time and setting and you can consistently deliver video, that's awesome. You should create video and YouTube's a great place for you. A lot of us out there, aren't that, that they don't have those kind of skills and you can work towards that. That's something I'm working towards, but it's not my preferred platform right now. Obviously I like podcasts. That's why I'm creating a podcast. For me, this is the number one place that anyone can create because the most natural thing that comes to us as humans is conversation and speaking. So for me, whether it's having a conversation with another person and having a dialogue around the topic of interest, or it's me communicating my thoughts and my point of view. Podcasts are an easy way to do that. I just turn it on. I have the things that I want to talk about and I talk about them. But for some of you, even that might not be what works best for you. Some of you might be writers at heart. You might, when you want your ideas to flow and you want them to be formed well, they might just flow for you on paper as, as you're writing. And if that's you, then you have blogs. Those have been around forever. And that's might be a format that you've just practiced at that you understand. You write emails every day, you write text, whatever it is. Maybe you're comfortable writing. That's great. You can start a blog. My point is you have to pick one of these to be your primary creating starting point. I'm not saying it's the only place where you're going to distribute content. I'm saying it's where your creativity is going to start. So for me, I start with the podcast. That podcast is then turned into show notes, which do become my blog. And then my podcast is embedded into that blog to make that more interesting. The clips from my podcast are then distributed as graphics and images via posts on social media. And in some cases, I take snippets and I put them on YouTube as videos, as highlights. And my point is, I am everywhere, as a lot of people are, but I had to choose what I want my starting point to be. And for a lot of you, you're going to have to make that same decision and decide where do you want to start. So picking your format is step number one in building your platform for your brand. And I wouldn't take it lightly. I'd say, what is the thing that you can deliver on? Because you want to be able to, to do something that you're going to be able to continue to create over time and build on. And that brings me to my second point, which is once you're building it, you want to make sure it's searchable. The reason that these formats that I'm mentioning are so important is that you want something that you can build that you can refer to that is indexed and cataloged. And when people are searching for it, they can find the thing that you are talking about. Say you have a certain topic, you're gonna have lots of topics, but say you have a certain topic that someone is looking for, you want them to be able to easily find it within your catalog of content. And the reason I take social media and I put it in a different place than I put YouTube, podcasts, and blogs is that it's hard to find information within someone's feeds on social media. Even Instagram, which you can go to a profile page and scroll up to find 
the picture that you might be talking about, for people that have been doing it for a long time, you're talking thousands of photos that are going to be hard to sort through to find the exact one you're talking about. It's not easily searched. And the same thing goes with Facebook posts. And the same thing goes with the everything else out there, the, Insta, the, the LinkedIn's, the TikToks, the Twitters, the Pinterest. I mean, Pinterest has got a pretty good organization structure, but that's also a very specific medium. But let's stick to these things, which are for us, if you're going to try to find something that you can reference back and say, hey, like I do, episode 74 is where I started to talk about personal branding. And if you want to hear my main concept around like, this is the framework for personal branding, go to episode 74. And that's easy for me to refer to, easy for you to find. And then if you go into iTunes and you search personal branding, you're going to find episodes of personal branding from me and other podcasts. And in search, when you go to a blog and you type in how to podcast or how to build a personal brand, there are going to be articles that come up, blogs that pop up that talk about personal branding. These are all things that are searchable. Same thing in YouTube. When you type in how to do a personal brand, there's going to be videos that have been cataloged that talk about that. That's what the power of having a platform is. It's something that you can categorize and search through. And there are obviously then strategies of how do you come up with the right titles of your shows and your episodes or your blogs, and how do you create the content that's embedded within that, that make them easier to find within search. There's an entire industry called search engine optimization that is built around this concept, which is when you create your content, you have to make sure that the searchability of it is more relevant than other people's content. And it's the competitive side of this business. But that is the second piece. You're talking about building a platform. You need to, number one, pick a format. And number two, make it searchable. And the third thing, which I'll dive into later, is about being consistent and patient. But let's keep going with searchable. The thing that I think a lot of people miss is, you know, the, the, there's a lot of hype and attention around social media. But the reason that is, is because it is a better place to drive initial attention than these platform channels that I'm talking about. Now, I'm not trying to get into a debate about what's more popular or not, but what I am trying to say is when I'm designing my model of my platform, my content, basically I'm saying, think about concentric circles. The outside ring is going to be the things that have the highest touch that mo the most people are seeing. And that's going to be your social media channels, the posts that people are bombarded with every day where they spend their time. Your job is to grab attention wherever you can from that. And then once you do that, hopefully you pull them into your world from the organic social media space or the paid social media space with ads and drive them down into the, the next circle, which is your platform, which is where you store your articles, your podcasts, your videos. And once you bring them into that world, those places can also drive them to your hub, which is your website in the middle and where all this content will continue to live and where your, your sales will be made. Hopefully if you have a business, you have something that you're trying to create or change out there in the world or sell, all that's going to be living on your website and it's going to be funneled to you through all these places. And at the end of the day, is your job to bring them down the rabbit hole. And your way to do that is to bring them down roads, which happen to be this idea of, you know, how do you get their information? So for me, I'm out there saying, okay, if I'm on social media on the outer ring, I'm using Facebook, I'm using Instagram, I might say, hey, by the way, I'm also giving away this free thing, this freebie, this lead magnet, as they call it. Maybe you take advantage of that and, you, and that brings you into my world. And I say, okay, now I have your information. By the way, here's an email. Don't forget to subscribe to my show where you can get lots more of this type of content that you showed interested in, that you showed interest in. And then next level, hey, you've been watching a lot of this show. Hey, I might have a product or service that really might speak to you because it's exactly related to the content you've been consuming. Check it out on my website. All this up and down comes through the communication channels. Uh, and we'll talk about list building in a different section, but the platform piece of this is after someone discovers you or kind of runs into you and says, oh, who's this person? I want to know more about them. You have to be able to send them somewhere that demonstrates your expertise in a way that says, wow, this person really knows what they're talking about. And it used to be like the only way you could do that was like a book, right? Put all your ideas into a book. But these days you have these formats that you can build your own platform. You can build your own media channel to share your expertise. And now they look at all this information and say, wow, I want to know more and more and more about all this stuff. So you have this like binge worthy area where they can look at all the information that's relevant to them that you've created. And that's the power of a platform. And then the third step, right? So we've talked about picking a, fo a format for your platform, 
making it searchable and in an indexed archive of your information. And the third thing is about consistency and being patient. The power of the platform is based on the time that it exists and how much value you add over time. So the best way to put this is that when you start your platform, it's going to be low viewership, low subscribers. You're basically only going to be exposed to the people that immediately know you and that took the time to look at it. But as you spend more time creating, every piece of content you add to your platform brings in a new eyeball. And that new person that comes in is given the opportunity then to look at other pieces of content you've created in the past and kind of go down the rabbit hole of your content and show. And they can become a regular subscriber to the new content that comes out. And so every time, let's say you just, you started with 10 people that were watching your videos on YouTube or 10 people that were listening to your podcast and subscribed or 10 people that subscribed to your newsletter slash blog. Those 10 people, once they've read the first, let's say you wrote five blogs or recorded five podcasts or shows, once they've recorded, they've listened to those five, they stop and then they're just getting the new episode every week. But maybe next week you've added five more people into it. And those five people binge watch the historic stuff. And then they're also on the list for the next week's show. And then five more and then five more. And it keeps going. And it becomes this snowball of every time you add a person, you're not just adding five people, you're bringing it from five to 25 to 30 to 40 to 50 to 60. And there, there might be some that drop off, of course. But the point is over time you are building and you are creating. And those people that that stay, a lot of them are going to be affected in a way that you could say, hey, by the way, tell your friends about this. And now it's not just the five that you brought in, but it's their five friends that they each told about it. So it might be from five to 25 or whatever that number is. But the point is, because you establish some consistency, over time, you are giving yourself the benefit of cumulative rewards and compound interest, if you will, if you take a financial point of view. And that only comes with time and patience. So when you get into this and you're building a platform, what you have to know and the mindset you have to have is, this is something I'm building for the long term that I understand people are going to come and go, but the platform gives me the opportunity to build over time. And that's not something that every channel has to offer. Not every channel is going to give you that same level of exposure of people that subscribe and binge listen to things that, that you've created. They might become a fan or subscriber, but they may not go back and look at all your historic stuff. Uh, and this is an opportunity to do that. And again, it's just one more level of you exposing and nurturing your potential clients and customers and fans and subscribers to bring them into your world and get them to know you. And as those relationships develop over time, maybe when they first met you, they were just curious and they liked what you said, but they weren't ready to buy something with you or do work with you. But over time, they might consider you to buy something from you. Or maybe they weren't ready, they weren't in the market for something that you were selling, but in six months, they will be. And that's the power of platform is you are keeping people with you along the ride. So that's the third thing is about consistency and time and, and having the patience to watch your platform develop and to nurture it over time and to make it better. Because by the way, your show won't be great when it starts, but it might be great when it ends or as it grows and builds. So that's the thing there. And if I can give you some action items, what I would do is go out there today, set up an account and just start creating, start putting something out there that puts your flag in the ground and says, you know what, I'm going to get better at this. And this is just my flag in the ground to get started. And the next thing is to, once you get started, like make sure you get those accounts set up and you record and you are out there finding your voice and developing your message. Because when you start to do this over and over again, you will find themes that you identify that, wow, I didn't know exactly what this was going to be about when I started. But now that I've done five or 10 of them, I'm starting to feel the thing that I really want to be talking about over time. And you adjust and you get better and more focused. I don't think you should waste your time planning everything so perfectly to begin with. I think you should let yourself go, have a general idea of what you want to talk about and get going. Because once you start, you will find focus in the content creation. And once you do that, you'll start to define your identity through that. You don't have to have it all figured out beforehand. You don't have to know exactly what you want to talk about before you hit record, but you do need to know the general direction. And from there, just get going and let the words themselves and the work itself help to mold you into who you want to be, help you find your message, help you find what you want to be known for. And that platform over time will get better and better. And the people will see that. They will start to see that your newer content really is focused and, and has some direction to it that they really align with. 
And that's what this is about, finding the people that you can align with that are drawn to you and repelling those that aren't, that have a different message that isn't for you. So that's what I can give for you guys today. Hopefully that gives you some action items that you can take in your business right now. If you don't have a platform, if all you have is an Instagram page or a Facebook or a LinkedIn, I'd encourage you to get out there and start figuring out where you want to build a platform and maybe create your first post or your first recording today and just say, this is where I'm going to start. And this is what I'm thinking I want to talk about initially and post. And if you want to, you're welcome to copy me on that. Tag me at Brandon Berkmeyer or at B Berkmeyer, depending on what platform you're on. And I'd be happy to find that. And all those social handles are at brandonbrands.com. You can find my socials there. And I'd love it if you guys tag me uh, in your socials or if you love this podcast, uh, take a picture of it, take a screen grab of this episode, share it with someone that needs it and or share it with your audience and have them listen. I do grow and thrive based on your guys' support just like anyone else does. So that time you take is hugely appreciated. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great week and keep on listening. And I look forward to continuing these conversations about personal branding. Uh, The next conversation will be about social proof as the third kind of pillar of building community. And we'll talk about that on the next one. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great week and weekend. And thank you for listening. Catch you next time. You've just taken your marketing knowledge to another level with this episode of Brands on Brands on Brands. But we have plenty more ways to not just help you build a business, but build a brand. Head over to brandandbrands.com for more resources, as well as access to our blogs, videos, and exclusive coaching sessions with your host. Be sure to visit brandandbrands.com.